So this tank right here is not quite a cube, but it has the cube aesthetic. And um, this is one of the best demonstrations of uh, Ali's aquascaping prowess, which is renowned in the Southern California reef scene. So, uh, man, what's really cool about this tank is it hasn't changed very much since I filmed it eight or nine years ago. Yeah, about the same, about the same. Um, tell us, um, you know, it looks pretty simple, and it is. Just, uh, you know, tell us what makes this tank tick. So, this is a 30 inch by 30 inch cube. Um, shallow cube, 20 inches tall, and it's a very simple tank. There's actually only four plugs that operate the whole thing. There's a plug for the protein skimmer down below. There's a plug for the return pump that shoots the water back into the tank. There's a plug for the power head right there. And there's a plug for the single 250 watt metal highlight bulb above it. And that's it. There's no dosers or uh, heaters or media reactors or anything like that. Um, what? Small water change once a month, maybe. Um, maybe five gallons once a month. It's about 100 gallons total, I think. Um, Is that a 250 watt metal you like? 250 watt double ended uh, uh, 14K outlet. And how often, how long do you run it? I run it on this tank about eight hours a day. Um, on most of my other tanks, I run the lights maybe five to six hours. On this one, a little bit longer. So you've had some of these corals for a, a really long time. Let's just start with the uh, elephant in the room with this giant hill of sun polyps. You mean of uh, the Polyphyllo grandis? Yeah. Yeah, those I've had for, I think about eight years. Um, the original video that you did on this tank, I don't think I had these in that tank. And that was what, 10 years ago? Getting there. Yeah, um, this bubble coral, I've had for many years. I actually inherited it from a buddy of mine and it's, he brought it in because it was too big for his tank, but it was still only a fraction of this size. And it was on this old piece of uh, Marshall Island rock. Um, and it's totally with that core, with that piece of rock now. Um, so this the, is the, the only stony coral in this tank right now? This is the only LPS coral, yes. Right. I, yep. used, I used to have a nice frog spot in here, however, uh, the orange spot filefish basically destroyed that, ate the whole thing. So it became filefish food, but those filefish are so cool that... And then you've got a bunch of uh, some green uh, finger leather. Yeah, How so often do you have to prune that back? I don't prune it back too often. Every, uh, maybe once, uh, uh, once every few months I might take some cuttings off of it, but... Well, that's an old strain, right? Yeah, it's a very old strain. Very cool. And this is the uh, the Red Sea pom-pom zinnia that uh, can be traced back almost 25 years, and it seems to have gotten away from you. The little <laughs> patch on the glass. Yep. Not a big deal. And uh, I'm actually going to cut that off. That uh, that annoys me. It's <laughs> I've left it there for right now, but I that irritates me. I think it ruins the aquascape. It kind of I don't know. I'm going to cut it off. Very cool. And you have a. Uh, you have a garden, you have just one garden eel or more than one? There's actually three garden eels in here. Um, that's one of them. This is the least shy one. And uh, he'll come up, he'll eat pellets, he'll eat flakes, he'll eat anything basically. And it's a very cool fish, but very, very uh, difficult to keep. It's a delicate, delicate fish. I don't recommend trying those. So what I like about this tank is it's um, essentially it's set up the same way you would set up a reef tank uh, you know 10 years ago um, is this still how you try to set up most of your tanks you know I, I do nowadays I might have a, uh, a dosing pump on most tanks uh, and I might incorporate LEDs or maybe uh, just T5s um, do you think you're holding on to this design because it's nostalgic yes and effective absolutely yeah I don't want to change this one I'll always keep this with a halide with the same halide same type of uh, skimmer and uh, same general uh, setup. So what I really like about this tank is this definitely has that uh, that old school feel. And uh, if someone wanted to set up a tank like this, uh, you know, what are some things that you would tell them with some tips or some advice for getting started? Uh, just to use a little bit of live rock. Don't go overboard with the live rock. Uh, the minimal live rock is such an important aspect. Same thing with the. Uh, the sump is very simple. There's just a protein skimmer down there. There's not all this fancy equipment. Just the protein skimmer and the return pump. You might need a heater if your house gets cold. But right, Robert. I don't need it. 
We're in Southern California right now, yeah. so it's uh, you know really moderate. Doesn't get too hot or too cold. I have a very small return pump. I think turnover from sump to tank is maybe one or two times. I'm not a big let's run ten times flow through my sump kind of guy. Just more noise and more, more bubbles. More noise, more bubbles, more power, more energy. Just keep it very simple. Um, and this is a you know very low flow animals will do good in this tank. So I just have a small uh, power head. I think that's a uh, Neojet. Neojet. Yeah. Cobalt Neojet. Um, and, you know, very little wattage. I usually use the Tunzi Scream Nanos, the 6015s. Yeah. Those are only three watts. And what I like about the 6015s is you could do a simple modification to them. Cut out the inside tube. And for like 50 bucks, you have a, a power head that, and for only three watts of energy, that'll do almost 1,500, 1,600 gallons per hour. It's, it's incredible. And so I use that on most other tanks. But on this, I needed a little bit less flow. So this Neojet worked perfect. Um, you know, not a ton of fish in here. I've had lots of fish in this tank before. Right now, it's just the, the file fish and the garden eels and a few pipe fish. Yeah, being a fish store, you have to cycle your displays to some degrees. Yeah. And right now, you're uh, you're sitting on just a pair of orange spot file fish. And uh, let's see, you had a couple pipe fish, dragon face pipe fish, the garden eels, but just nothing, again, like your Pico Reef, just nothing that puts a real tax on the biological system, right? Yeah, absolutely. Very low, minimal bio load fish-wise. Corals don't really affect the bio load, as you guys know. They almost uh, have a negative impact. They're gonna absorb nutrients. So I don't worry about corals too much. Let them get big and juicy. Um, but for fish, I, I like to keep it minimal. Very cool. Man, well, uh, yeah, this one is, this tank is definitely an example. I think uh, you definitely hit the nail on the head as far as like the minimal live rock, because the, uh, the corals are the aquascape. And it's just so nice. This thing's a perfect height and uh, really great aquascape.